is going to be SK Telecom T1. Impact in the top lane, Bengi in the jungle, Faker in the mid lane with Piglet, and Pumandu is your AD carry and support. And on the red side, they don't need much of an introduction here. It's TSM. Dyer's in the top lane, the Abud in the jungle, Reginald in mid lane, Wild Turtle on AD carry, and Expecial on support. This is going to be a very, very interesting game. I'm looking forward to it, and you know, there's there's a lot of similarities to some of the champion pools of, of uh, these teams in terms, you know, both like to play Zed. We've seen Fizz being played by Faker as well as by Reginald. Uh, Caitlyn likes to be played by both of these AD yeah. carries. So uh, we'll see how this pick band phase is going to play out. And there's a couple of interesting games I want to see just, in the ch just within champion select. Because if I, I basically want to know how much SKT uh, respects TSM. Because if, the, if they're actually really hating on him and Como like, convinces these guys to like, let Reginald play Zed just to throw dirt in his face, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it'd be, it, like, if they wanted to be super cocky about it, SKT could do it. Well, take a look at this. We're already through all six bands. These are rapid fire. Fiddlesticks, Vi and Fizz taken away from SKT or banned by SKT. TSM, on the other hand, Shen, Thresh, and Zed, and Instalock Ari there for Faker. And that's interesting a little bit for TSM because Reggie plays both Ari and Zed and said, we know you'll first pick Ari this happens, we'll let you have it and we'll grab the Corky, we'll grab one of those high impact junglers like Elise that you've already banned out the Vi. So we'll have to see how they play from here. We've been seeing Bengi playing uh, Java in the fourth and arguably I think he's my favorite Java in the fourth jungler that I've seen anywhere in the OGN uh, champions. He's phenomenal on that. And, these are quick fire picks here. SKT and TSM are really signaling to the viewers that they've thought this out, and I actually think it's going to plan arguably for both teams right now. Zyra and Renekton locked in there for SKT. Both these lineups look a fair bit like default lineups for these guys, even though a lot of these champions are steals. Even though we haven't really seen Piglet excel on non Caitlyn Vayne, and to be fair, we're probably going to see the Caitlyn come out at the end of the day for him. Uh, it's still, it's the Renekton being stole away from Dyrus. Of course, the the uh, Rumble is still available for him. Sona coming out, not a surprise here for a special. Hopefully, he'll actually hit his crescendos. I know uh, Krepo was alluding to that earlier on in the desk. And um, Gragas here for Reginald, that's going to be a fun one. It's one of his old standbys. And we've seen Gragas show up a lot this tournament, and here it is again. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how this matchup works, especially against the likes of that Ari. So a lot of pressure going to be on those barrels and making sure they land, making sure you get rid of Faker. This is going to be the first time we're seeing uh, Impact playing Renekton. He's actually played four different champions in four different games. So uh, once again, showing some diversity, third time for Pumandu playing Zyra. Now Caitlyn is up, as is Vayne. And as you mentioned, it is going to be that Caitlyn locked in for Piglet. Yeah, it's just the easy math here. Vayne is not the easiest matchup uh, when you fight up against a Corky. It's, it's a pretty easy lane bully. And if SKT can't happen to get themselves a 2v1, it just makes life really rough. And as you said before, Renekton in a 1v2, not the best idea either. So we're down to TSM's last pick. SKT, definitely a lot of aggression. This, this looks like an SKT lineup. It's a lot of early game aggression. You've got the Ari Roam, you've got the Lee Sin ganks. And, and to back it all up at the end of the day, Piglet's on Caitlyn to siege down turrets and to carry late game team fights. I have to say I am a little bit nervous here for TSM. I think that the champions that SKT got on are not only comfort picks, I think it fits their playstyle as a team. Yeah. And you know, we are going to see Bengi once again on Lee since the second time in this tournament. He likes those early sort of gank heavy type junglers. We've seen him playing Jarvan, Lee, and Vi. TSM have to decide the last pick. This is for Dyrus, mm -hmm. and I have no idea where it's going. So the yeah, to sort of look at, uh, yes, yeah, so there's the Rumble coming in. To, so you talked about how SKT got sort of an SKT type of lineup, things they like to run. What TSM did with the ban phase was help isolate and isolate Reggie and Faker in 1v1 by removing Shen so that impact couldn't help. They also removed Mandu's ability to make picks for himself. He's on, he's on Zyra, he's a bit more reactive. You can like flash root, but that's not great. So they said, no, only Bangi and Faker get to make plays. Pumandu doesn't get to anymore. And then, <laughs> and then the Zed ban is just to help Reggie win a 1v1. Zed's a lot harder to beat than Ari is. I'm a little concerned about TSM's composition in that if the Crescendo doesn't lock up multiple people, the Greg Assault and the Equalizer are sort of con contradictory. They don't yeah. necessarily stack and help one another out. So a lot of pressure going to be on TSM's calling a communication in this matchup. And, I want to see where the, the, the vote lies, because as these teams are spawning into the rift, let's take a look at that public opinion poll. According to LOL Esports, 61% of you have faith in Faker, the playmaker. 
and SKT. And of course, the analysts are on the SKT hype train as well. Last time, you guys were all right. I am, though, a little bit surprised to see that the fan vote didn't go to TSM, being just that LOL Esports is a, is a Western site, but these guys have, have faith in, uh, in Monte Cristo's hype train. So I, I, I think there's even more pressure on Reginald this particular matchup. We know that TSM revolves around Reggie and his performances, but on a Gragas against an Ari, if his barrels are not explosively good, <laughs> they're is going to be so much more <laughs> difficulty placed on TSM to pick up victories. And, and you're right about that, but <clears throat> here's the cool thing about how TSM plays with Gragas, actually, is this is a lineup that works really, really well early mid. Uh, when Reggie plays Gragas, and I actually remember back to the Season 2 North American Regional, he was criticizing, I believe it was Prawley, on his Gragas play, saying, when you get Gragas and you're sieging, span your barrels, even your ultimate, early on, and just poke your opponents off the turret. Play a push style. And when you're running with a Corky, who's going to spike at 18 minutes with a Trinity Force, when you're playing Elise, who's early game dominant, when you've got Rumble, who does all of his damage with just two items, Sword Shoes and Haunting Guys, TSM will spike very early in this game, and they can play hyper-aggressive and get things started. Well, we'll see how it works out. As it stands, both teams deciding to meet you in the mid lane. SKT in the blue trunks on the left-hand side, taking on TSM in the red trunks on the right-hand side. Now, Dyrus is going to spot members of SKT invading, getting that sort of very traditional red buff wards down. And it looks like Pumandu is going for what we've begun calling the Ozone Ward. That is a ward that you use to seek out a 2v1 or a 2v2 matchup. And when you're looking at a matchup like Zyra Kate, you're looking for a 2v2 matchup there. You're looking to bully your opponents out of lane because you can do it when you're as good as Piglet and Mandu. That ward, by the way, we're talking about it, is up near that secondary top lane turret. Even if you run through the brush way up there against the wall, you'll still spot them coming out of the lane. And we often see teams who do this ward run their dual lane near the mid lane and then run to the lane they want to go fight at. And we do see TSM have mimicked the ward, actually gotten even a little deeper on the side of SKT. So as far as depth into enemy territory is concerned, TSM currently with the advantage. However, neither team has responded to it just yet. You see Pumandu and Piglet going to be helping out Bengi up towards that blue buff area. And this is pretty nice for TSM. They'll get more or less a blind steal on the red buff. At the end of the day, these teams will probably trade their buffs, but there's a chance that Bengi guesses wrong, thinks he can fight for TSM's red, and gets, uh, you know, just gets kind of turned around. Well, we'll see how it works out for them. Impact right now, he's stuttered just by that double golem for a brief moment, and has now returned to lane. A special Odd One and Wild Turtle now moving towards this bottom lane. It doesn't look like Hakun has been leveled up yet, so if they're going to jump on this, it's going to be a, a fair amount of damage. Impact at level 1. We'll see how he decides to go. It does actually just get out of the lane cleanly. Takes a bit of damage from both Wild Turtle and Expecial. And they actually forced Impact to learn Slice and Dice at level 1. Uh, which lowers his sustain under the turret a little bit until he hits level 2. You, you can always see small things like that occasionally turn into advantage. It might not mean much, but Awan is on this side of the map. They could always go for a dive. Yeah, Bengi is up there right now. He is currently level 3. The wave is pushing towards Dyrus' lane, and I think he smells it. He realizes something's up, and he's backing out cleanly before anything can happen. That's really, really smart. That's TSM respecting the opportunities and the openings that the SKT lineup has. TSM looking for that same dive, though, and Impact is waiting around. So Bengi was able to get a good amount of damage down onto Dyrus. However, he still has his flash. Right now, the odd one is waiting in the wings as the minion wave is pushing up. He's level 2, but there's enough damage here that could kill Impact. Now we'll have to see if the CC lands. We do see this turret aggro has been pulled onto a special. Impact slices it. He dices out. Now the odd one is tanking. He repels up. Damage goes down. There is going to be a power cord landing. Down to about 50 HP. The odd one's trying to get in range. Wild Turtle wants to pick us up. There's no flash available. Impact gets out cleanly. He survives the 3v1. That was not a perfectly executed dive by TSM. Special pulled aggro so early on there with no one hitting impact. It does give TSM presence over that turret. They'll get a lot of damage output there, but Dyrus is in the same position. He's surrounded too. This is a level one Dyrus. You see Bengi diving to the ward. Does follow up that resonating strike. Takes one tower hit for his troubles. The first tower to fall is going to be SK Telecoms as TSM get the early advantage. However, it will be evened up very quickly in that top lane. Yeah, Dyrus is in just as bad of a situation as Impact. That turret went down first. 
but it's not going to be a one for zero here. Dyrus still has nowhere to go. He can't see Bangi anywhere on the map, so he has to respect the dive potential. Well, right now, Dyrus is just playing as far back as he possibly can. With that tower falling, Impact has time to farm. Faker is going to be able to get away from Reginald. Some decent damage going down. Reggie, however, is 13 CS behind Faker at five minutes on the clock. And look at the gold difference between these teams. 800 gold with just an equal distribution of resources there. Reginald is down 10 minion kills in his lane. Ba uh, Impact is up 11 minion kills in his. Even the AD carries. Look at Piglet versus Wild Turtle. 34 to 16? SKT is just winning the laning phase. TSM needs to get a hold of the match and try to pull back those last hits with that tower finally falling in the top lane. The minions have pushed onto Dyrus' lap and he can finally get his... Uh, Get some gold and some experience racking up there. I'm sitting only at level 2, while Impact is currently level 4 right now. But the one thing that TSM is going to be able to do is freeze the top lane for Dyrus. So you see, SKT lane swapped back. Zyra and Caitlyn are down there fighting Wild Turtle and Special. That's fine. But look what Renekton gets to do. He's going to basically three-man lane in the bottom lane, whereas Dyrus is going to get experience in gold in complete safety on the top side of the map. And one of the core TSM plays is that eight minute dragon fight if Rumble hits level six, which he'll be able to do and then come down in time for a dragon. Well, they're going to have to uh, make sure he stays in lane for a very long time right now. And minions are pushing towards him. Level three right now, getting closer to that level six. Once Reginald hits his ulti as well, it's going to be a lot of AoE damage in that very confined space. And you know just how much TSM likes to take control of the dragon. All right now, Reggie in the mid lane, he's closed up that CS difference. 38. 33. And he already has that Chalice of Harmony in his back pocket, so really wants to spam those barrels out like you were talking about during the pre-match. And actually there's a battle in the mid lane, Faker getting low! Faker is going to get caught up, the cocoon doesn't land, however, Hard One is going to be able to back away. Reginald throws himself forward, the barrel not going to connect, and without any mana, Reggie cannot follow up. Sonic Wave comes down from Bengi, and Hard One and Reginald almost making it work. Arvon had the opportunity to flash Cocoon instead of just casting it regularly, but thought he could land it anyway, and Faker's last dash got him out of range. But as you pointed out, you're right, Reggie has new items, he's equaled up the minion kill lead, and that mid lane matchup, that, that super hyped Faker matchup, Reggie's holding onto it. He's keeping even right now, arguably winning, with the fact he has that flash in his back pocket right now. We'll see whoever secures that first blood kill. They have been trading back and forth. We see Dyrus closing the gap on the CS numbers. He now finds himself only nine behind, and that is going to be shrinking even more as time goes on. However, Bengi and Impact, they definitely want to jump onto him. And Dyrus is alone right here against two. He's in a lot of trouble. Flash is available, instantly flashes away. Here comes Benny. Song of Wave follows up with a resonating strike, and there's a bit of damage coming down. Impact lands the stun. Dyrus maybe should not have gone back in. He's going to go down for first blood. Dyrus re-engaged when he shouldn't have. And he had no items there either. Doran's uh, shield and potion just got obliterated there by the base damages of the abilities of that SKT lineup. So well played by Impact to get in range and land that on-hit stun from Renekton. Right now, though, Odd One is moving towards this dragon. Eight minutes is getting closer and closer, and there are three pink wards on this dragon. If we know TSM love those eight-minute dragons, you can bet your bottom dollar that SKT are going to be aware of it as well. But unfortunately for TSM, the only ultimate they have is Reginald's. With that death, Dyrus is still only level 4 and it's special as well. But Odd One has a flank on this bottom lane. Well, the question is now, can they lock anyone down? Pumandu is keeping the attention of Wild Turtle and special. He will get dropped in the background. The Odd One is catching onto Piglet, lands the cocoon, instantly cleansed away. Piglet forced to flash. Odd One failed flashes. He face plants into the wall and that cancels the chase. But it allows TSM to get on the dragon. Dyrus has been collected collapsed on by Bengi and Impact. He's not going to get away, and the Dominus picks up the kill. TSM a start a dragon. That's going to be the dragon secured here for TSM. Oddwood's making a lot of great plays, but you know Darius is not happy with the performance right now. He talked about morale in his interview. TSM has to make sure they keep that. They're only down 400 gold. There's a still a close game here. Well, this trade's not over yet. Reginald forced to flash away. Faker uses the second proc of that Spirit Rush to get out cleanly, and Reginald Forced off of that tower. Odd One's going to at least pick up the uh, blue. Help Reggie pick up that blue, rather. I don't allow him to continue spamming, but another tower falling. The inner top turret. SK Telecom slowly pulling ahead. TSM are being bottom lane focused. 
Their ganks have come down to their duo lane. They had the 3v1 dive early against Impact. You saw Odwin come back there as well, and it helped them get the dragon as well. At nine minutes this time, but close enough, I suppose, for TSM. Uh, but that's left Dyrus on an island. Normally, he's a very consistent player. Doesn't go on tilt, holds his own even when getting ganked. The thankful thing is he is on a low-scale champion. He just needs some magic pen. But by focusing all their effort on the bottom lane for TSM, Dyrus is falling behind here. Impact is scaling up nicely. Those first few team fights are going to be so important for TSM if they can combo the equalizer and explosive casts together. And we'll have to see as and when that happens, because for the time being, SKT are playing the skirmish game, and that skirmish game revolves around killing Dyrus. They've really invested a lot of time up top there. And they're investing even more. Impact has picked up a vision ward here that he just put down in that brush you're seeing. That's going to spot out one of the core gank paths, help ensure that Bengi doesn't get spotted while going up, and help see Reginald and Odwin counter gank. SKT are still planning on wreaking havoc on this side of the map. Well, well read by the odd one. Fully aware of the uh, positionings and maybe even the trends down the bottom lane. Crescendo's down. Piglet is dropped so incredibly low. 110 HP. Wild Turtle does not land the Missile Barrage. Now they flash forward. Exhaust catches onto Pooh Mandu. They continue the chase. And the Missile Barrage plus one more auto attack secures a kill for Wild Turtle. Now in the top lane. The odd one's forced backwards. We see the safeguard from Bengi. The explosive barrel comes up. The body slam throws him backwards. The first kill is secured here for Bengi. Now Dyrus is in trouble. Equalizer has already been used. And this is going to be two kills in reply for SK Telecom. It's not over, it's now Wild Turtle. He's tanking up the turret. Ace in the hole is being channeled. The minions are bashing away. They trade kills, it's special. Secures the final blow. That's a bit of a better trade there in the bottom lane for TSM. But in the top lane jungle, Reggie held on to his ultimate too long. He could have killed Bengi in that fight, and instead the Lee Sin got out. That top side of the map continues to go well for SKT, and you see a 5-3 kill lead. It's working for them. Renekton is currently 2-0-2. Impact, 63 CS to Dyrus is 41. He's already got that cloak completed, working towards the Spirit Visage, and it just synergizes with his whole kit. And when you think of all the magic damage on the side of TSM, it's the perfect item for him to sustain that burst. It really is. So Impact is having, honestly, a very high impact in this game. He's, he's itemizing well, he's scaling well, he's leveling up, he's doing great. But look at what Dyrus is doing. I want to keep comparing these lanes. Dyrus has been hit so hard in this lane, he's rushed a Seeker's Arm Guard. He's going for a, 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 a Haunting Guys now, but he started with the Ruby Crystal. He's just like trying to survive with his itemization. He'll have a late Haunting Guys, late Sorcerer issues. Dyrus will not help team fights for a very long time in this game. All right, we'll see how it works out for him. Wild Turtle right now, 2 1 1. Currently getting been involved in all of TSM's kills. He's got that Phage and the Sheen completed. He knows that Bengi is clearing wards in the river, so he should be a little bit careful. We did see that X Special and the Odd One are moving towards that bottom lane. Crescendo almost available, and you know what? You have to give props to Wild Turtle and X Special. They've They've traded fairly evenly in these 2v2 once they've matched up. They've done a very good job. I would say they've pulled ahead to some extent, but you've got to consider how well Piglet's actually holding up. Their minion kills are pretty much identical here. If you look at the gold, they're only about 200 apart, despite TSM picking up more kills in that lane. Oh, I'm busy watching this lane, and you don't get a moment to breathe. Everybody's throwing everything at one another. Here comes Reginald. We do see the crescendo catches them up. Wild Turtle gets his third kill. He's going to get dropped by Bengi. The true uh, damage isn't going to land, however, and Bengi kicks back Reginald. Great decision. Ace in the hole. Will channel, but it's not going to be enough. That's a two-for-one trade that TSM come out in the lead. And they keep making those ganks work. It was a really nice kick by Bengi to keep Reggie out of range, so he couldn't ult Piglet and pick up the kill. But even though, even so, the Abba got to go in. So watch this. It's a great crescendo by special. You mentioned it coming up at this time. Underneath the turret, which is so smart as well, it catches two. Even if Piglet tries to cleanse out, there's just so much damage coming across. It's a great counter gank by Bengi. But watch this. He kicks out Reggie, jumps to a ward to make sure he could do it, but Piglet had nowhere to go. Two for ones, definitely working in their favor, getting close to the ending of that Trinity Force completed for Wild Turtle. Once again, we keep getting a glimpse of that top lane. Dyrus, 0-3 right now, 40 CS behind that of Impact. And Impact has basically had complete control over these double golems. This is about the third or the fourth time I've seen him stealing them away. And 
Yeah. He's just pulling even further ahead of TSM. And that is credit to the ward control of SKT. The fact that he's been able to live in that top lane so far pushed up, that's a credit to Faker pushing mid all the time with his ability power, and it's a credit to all the wards that Bengi and Impact have been putting down there to keep that secured. And by the way, speaking of ward control, Oracle's Elixir also picked up here for Bengi, so it's going to be a really tough vision game for TSM. You see 20 seconds on the clock for Dragon respawning in the not-too-distant future. And Bengi is going to be hanging out in this bottom lane. Crescendo is not available. And Wild Turtle doing a pretty good job at avoiding most of that damage. Arduan and Reginald stealthing their way towards this position. But you can see the pink wards there for SKT. They have vision control at the bottom of the river. Exactly. They can see TSM move around. TSM already have their pink wards on the Dragon itself. But this is a timer that SKT already has. You notice both top laners are on this side of the map, ready to fight for Dragon. And, T and SKT are actually pushing the turret before TSM can even start Dragon. TSM in position for Dragon, and all of a sudden SKT take the tower in middle. 3-1 up as far as towers are concerned. It's a 2,000 gold lead, and now all of a sudden Korean SK Telecom team is moving towards the Dragon Pit. There's been a lot of wards killed already. This game is incredibly fast-paced. You can see them swarming around. The ward control being taken out by SKT, trying to steal away Dragon in time before TSM fights for it. But both these teams are ready to battle. And we do see that TSM is a little bit split up. Sonic Wave connects on the odd one. Bengi does not follow through with it. Dyrus is sitting on the top half they of might the catch river. Him. He needs to be very, very careful. SKT continue to clear out wards. There's no wards left for Dyrus. So if he wants to come into the river, it's going to have to be blind. We do see that TSM, they land the cocoon, decide not to follow this up. Flash Crescendo is available if X Special feels it. Now Dyrus is rejoined. This, this team fight, now that Darius has finally gone around, it's a better comp for TSM. It's so much AoE, and Corky has spiked pretty well here. The Bloodthirster for Caitlyn, mostly stacked, but even still, the 5v5. This is a comp that TSM likes to run. We will out 5v5 you. So they started off the Dragon for the second time. SKT are a little bit split. Impact was in the mid lane. Now all of a sudden, they're looking to challenge. The explosive cast goes down. Blue Man Dude's dropped low. Grasping Roots catches a few. That's a great equalizer. At least keeping them out of the fight. The first victim is Blue Man Dude, but Dyrus has dropped in the background. Now Wild Turtle at 50% HP, forced out of the fight. Here comes Faker. Wild Turtle's going to be able to pick up a kill onto Pinky. Now the odd one is in trouble. Wild Turtle really wants to help, but he's so far away from the rest of his team. He started the recall. He should be able to get out. A TSM win the fight two for one. Exactly. That is the TSM 5v5. Pumandu tried to start the fight early on, but the equalizer, the explosive cast, separated the team well enough. And you talked about the coordination there between Rumble and Gragas. And what needs to happen there for TSM happened there for TSM. Reggie must ult first, separate the team, and then say, when you file back in, you'll file back in over an equalizer. It's not Rumble ulti first, then kick them off of it. It's make them run through Rumble ulti. Well, that particular fight did... Uh, it, it, it evened up the kill score. Seven to seven. TSM still a couple thousand gold behind, but they are several towers behind as well. So, as you can see right now, SKT... Yeah, yeah, let you know exactly what's happening so you can get wood. <laughs> is a keyboard problem with Faker, so we should be on the uh, technical side of things very, very soon. Yeah, and of course you can tell there is a clear uh, home field advantage here for TSM. The, the crowd definitely still behind them. Even though the online vote thought that SKT would win this matchup. And, and yeah, there's a bit of a gold lead and that does come from turrets. That is something that the Korean squad has done very, very well. And it's mostly come from that top lane, actually. It's been the constant pressure onto Dyrus. And to think about what's been happening there. TSM's been kind of constantly getting that bottom lane, a lane that already has a turret killed. When SKT are, are, are ganking that lane, it's a pushed up lane right in front of the secondary turret, which they got as part of one of those ganks there. They've actually been pressuring deep into TSM's territory and have never gotten punished for it. Well, one thing that we do have to highlight is Wild Turtles Corky is currently four kills, two deaths, and three assists. He's doing very, very well for himself. He's only a couple of CS behind that at Piglet. And you know, Turtle and Special in this duo, they've set up many kills. The Crescendos have been good. Their engagements have been good and, and, and uh, you know, well controlled. And they're giving Piglet and Mandu a hard time. Yes, and this is actually, I think, mostly the matchup, but then also TSM playing the matchup well. So Caitlyn basically auto-attacks you to death. She has to sit there and swing, and she needs items to be good and had finished an early bloodthirst because he, Piglet realizes SKT needs to fight a lot early on because it's a very cl close-fought game. Until those items are really done, Kate doesn't do a heck of a lot, 
Like, people call Caitlyn a good lane bully because she has so much range. But if you can get past that, her actual 1v1 fight is not nearly as good as Corky's. And what TSM are doing are engaging, jumping in there with Valkyrie, using Crescendo, locking up the targets and saying, well, now we're in the same range, easy to 1v1, and TSM are taking advantages that way. Well, TSM going to have to continue taking advantages. I'm hearing that we will be going back into the game very soon, as you can see it on your screens. And TSM now starting to reposition for another potential dragon fight. It's definitely one that sort of went in their favor, but it's still very, very close. TSM haven't got clean-cut, obvious team fight wins. No, they haven't. It's been a very hard-fought game between these two. And in the end of the last one, TSM actually got ward control overall, so the odd one is able to sweep out a number of these wards. Those two don't see each other. That little clip, cliff right there doesn't let them spot each other, and that might actually bait one of these teams into thinking they're unseen and doing something. Well, if this fight breaks out, this time around, Faker has a death fire grasp completed. That is a lot of burst damage that could delete someone from TSM off the map. And the Equalizer plus Crescendo are not up here for TSM, while as, except for Actually, it's almost coming back up right now. SKT has more ultimates available. They would out 5v5 TSM right now. TSM needs to stall this one out, drag it out. There's quite a long time left on X Specials Crescendo. 45 seconds before it is available. But Equalizer should be up in just a moment. Now. They're killing wards back and forth. Bengi continues to use that Sight Stone to put even more vision down. X Special with the Oracles is clearing it out. Right now, SKT. They've decided to back off. They want that mid in a turret. That's a very smart trade right there. They knew TSM would out-trade, but that mid turret could go down to this push. It does look like it's going to. Now that uh, Piglet's going to get onto that one, Dragon will be secured by TSM in just a second. The tower has fallen first, and now all of a sudden, SKT find themselves in the top half of the jungle in TSM's jungle. They back away. TSM still 3,000 gold behind, but four towers down. Yeah, and SKT have made the most of their positioning here by rowing to the top side of the jungle and stealing away the red buff. There was a bit of a missed opportunity for TSM, though, as Wild Turtle could have stayed in the bottom lane this whole time and traded a turret. In addition to that dragon, he's going back now, but Renekton's recalling and also Faker's on the proper side of the map. Maybe Turtle gets it, but here's Piglet as well. Here comes Piglet, level 11 versus level 10. Wild Turtle probably with a... An interesting item in a, a com competition. We see that Avarice Blade completed for Piglet, as well as that Bloodthirster. Wild Turtle decides not to challenge and backs away clean. He got at least a couple of auto attacks onto that tower. So here you get into the mid game, and, and this is where the interesting things start really happening between these teams, because they have such different goals in mind. TSM, they want a 5v5. We knew coming into this World Championship, TSM loves to 5v5. When they play champions like Gragas and Rumble and Sona, man, do they want team fights. And you've noticed on these dragon fights that SKT either doesn't want to fight them or straight up loses those fights. SKT, on the other hand, they're all playing picks. They've got a Lee Sin jungle. They've got Caitlyn with an early Bloodthirster to land ultimates. They've got Lee Sin. They've got Ari. Individual fights are what SKT are looking for. These scraps the jungle is what they're looking for. And as you can see, with all those towers down and the complete map control, SKT steal away yet another buff. As we hit 20 minutes on the dot, did you see that blue was donated over to Faker? And SK Telecom now moving towards that mid lane. They're trying to pull a Fnatic on TSM. They're hiding in the bush and waiting for someone to come to them. They've backed away though. They have, and they realized that there, nothing was, no one was really falling for it right there. There's nothing for. TSM to fight for anymore, they kind of let the blue buff get stolen away. And TSM going back to the laning phase, it's, it's interesting because it lets Dyrus get that haunting guys and get to scale up and be more powerful, but at the same time, the longer this laning phase goes on, the more SKT gets to get random picks with Lee Sin and Ari, which is a scary thing for TSM to deal with. They have to play this mid-game, both these teams have played the mid-game really, really well. Faker will be coming down from the river on the bottom half. The battle goes out, catches Pumandu. Now that I look at it, it's actually him that's sitting with that blue buff on. Let me pick that one up in the background. And you see that once Faker and Piglet get closer to that mid lane, TSM back off at exactly the right time. They were not at risk of being jumped on by the members of SKT. And they are playing this. Basically, TSM's trying to find gold. They're trying to find farm yes. without putting themselves in dangerous situations. Exactly. And you notice what SKT have done to help create more dangerous situations is Bangi got an early sight stone on Lee Sin. Now, a lot of that is because ward jumping is awesome and it makes you have really flashy plays. But also, this composition from SKT needs ward control to do anything. They need to get these oddball picks. They're set up to create them 
but it's the only way they can actually fight in an advantageous situation. And with Special running around with an Oracles, sweeping these wards out, they remove that option from the Koreans. It's working very well in their favor. Since Special has actually picked up that Oracles and more importantly cleared out those wards, SKT have definitely dialed back the tempo on this game. We did see Bengi split pushing that bottom lane for a little bit. He's been pushed backwards as Reginald now continues to apply focus on that bottom lane. He's cleared out the minions and he's pushed it back. He's now falling further behind. 145 CS to the 181 of Faker. But when you consider how much TSM's been on the back foot, they've held this 3,000 gold lead for the better part of seven to nine minutes. They really have. And you've got to consider if TSM starts winning fights, there's a bunch of turrets available for TSM to kill. If the minions stay at the middle of the map, there's two outer turrets and three inner turrets waiting for TSM. If the minions stay in the middle and SKT wins a fight, there's only one second tier turret for SKT to pick the snowball of gold lead. And that can be a really huge risk for them. We'll have to see how TSM play this one out. As it stands, TSM have really only contested fights in the bottom half of the map or around the Dragon Pit. Elsewhere, it's just been Dyrus just playing catch up. He is now getting scarier. 124 CS. He has that haunting guys completed and the Seekers, which is fully stacked. We do see now SKT invading the red buff area of TSM. And there's a lot of members congregated in a very small amount of space. Exactly. And Gragas and Rumble both have crested that level 11 point. So the TSM lineup has sort of turned on now. 5v5s would work well for these guys. You see them continuing to sweep wards out, continuing to prevent any picks here at all from SKT. And SKT are still the team looking to create openings. I actually think they get outscaled as well in this lineup. Elise will do more late game than Lee Sin without some kind of miracle plays. So the pressure is really on for this Korean team to dial it up and make something happen. Well, we'll see how they decide to do it. As it stands, SKT have cleared out most of the vision in the red buff area. They're trying to pull TSM towards them, but TSM have not taken the bait. They have not pushed further forward than they need to. However, they are sorely lacking on that vision. Cocoon goes out as she catches the red buff. Now they're very close to one another. Red buff was secured there by Bengi without using that smite. Yeah, Arbon actually smote a little bit too early, slightly miscalculated the damage. Bengi got it with the second part of his Q with the resonating strike. So, good pick up there, and that's that's the kind of stuff SKT is looking for. They're looking to create openings by pressuring buffs, keeping ward control over there, and TSM are smart enough to know to not get picked off, but of course, SKT continue to scale up. As we see, Dragon is going to respawn in five seconds' time. SKT have the exact timer on it. They do have some vision heading towards them, however, not as much as we've seen previously. Four members of TSM in the mid lane, they decide to try and push towards that tower, however, they're a little overextended. The odd one finds himself he is going to flash away. DFG comes out, strangle thorns, picks up the final hit. Now all of a sudden, Expecial's in trouble. Crescendo did land, but it isn't going to be enough to save them. The charm goes wide. Equalizer comes down. Wild Tunnel secures a kill onto Faker as he's been exhausted. He Rumble is going to be able to pick up a kill there onto Zara in the background. Dyrus does get dropped. That's a double kill for Impact. A two for four, and Reginald was a little late to the party. TSM after playing so safe for so long. Face check, basically. They got a little too eager for the dragon there. SKT had ward control. Aside from one ward, kind of near the wolf camp, there was nothing for TSM. They're walking in blind to this, and look at SKT explode out of the brush. Nice try by the Alvin to get out, but just drops down the knockup as well. But watch the team up for the rest of this. It's basically 3v5 now, and TSM puts really good damage onto Faker. Wild Turner just goes all in to find this one. Equalizer actually slightly would have missed. So good by, by TSM to pick up two kills here. The map control, of course, SKTs. Yeah, and definitely a great explosive cast there from Reginald. I uh, missed that off on the bottom. He was at least able to knock away members of SKT, but he cannot afford to make mistakes like that. They are now 5,000 gold behind. For the first time in a long time, that gold gap has grown further. Five towers to one, TSM. Still looking for that opening, still looking for their fight, looking for their time to make something happen, because it's all been very reactive thus far. It really has been, and you've got to compliment SKT on doing a good job of not getting suckered into those fights. Sure, the gold lead is still four and a half up, but as we talked about, TSM's comp has sort of turned on. Their 5v5s are good. Reggie right now is wearing a blue buff. We can see as TSM, they could run to the mid lane, throw barrels at SKT, whittle them down, and then siege the turret and SKT have stopped that from happening. A lot of that, 
is Impact, who can win any 1v1 in the top lane or whichever lane he goes to, will be able to constantly pull attention from TSM, preventing those 5v5s. Right, as it stands right now, Dyrus has picked himself up a Giant's Belt, so still no major item completed. This reminds me of our day one games where Faker would just dash across the wall and blow people up. Impact right now moving towards this mid lane. Reginald and Wild Turtle, without really lots of support, throws out an exploratory barrel, but this is very, very brave. Reginald's oh no. going to be in trouble. He gets stunned up. Pick is going to jump on me, force to flash away. Now all of a sudden the odd one is in trouble. Dominus comes down. A decent equalizer is going to throw them out. They hit Impact backwards, but he's the tankiest member. Here comes Faker. Here comes Bengi. Bengi's going to jump onto Reginald. Reginald's still alive with the Strangle Thorns. Throws the odd one up into the air. The general is down. Now Piglet dives onto Wild Turtle, trading a lot of damage back and forth. The odd one is forced out incredibly low as he's down. Now SKT with a four-man advantage in this mid lane. They're going to jump on the tower. They're healthy enough to keep the siege going, and Reggie's going to get dropped dangerously low from this. Ace in the hole slams him down. The rest of SKT focusing onto this tower. As you see Reginald doing the best he can to get back. SKT wisely going to back away safely. After that, another misplay from TSM. They can't afford to be doing that. That was rough. The TSM was too eager to get into that fight. They wasted a whole bunch of cooldowns on the tank, as you mentioned during the battle. A whole lot was burned on an impact, and impact survived. All the effort SKT had been spending, ganking for impact, knocking down Dyrus, dealing damage from him, and letting impact scale up. He's level 15 now, by the way. You saw it pay off there. Sunfire Spirit Visage absorbed all the damage and let his team carry the fight. 4-0-4 is Impact Renekton. Right now, TSM, the momentary respite, they may be able to get some damage down. However, Humandu and Bengi are here in the right time. Reginald decides not to use that ultimate and try to knock him backwards. But this should be the TSM gameplay here. Their ults are coming back up right now. The, the Siege game, we just still haven't seen it from TSM. The Siege can cause 5v5s to start because SKT can't initiate cleanly even underneath their own turret, SKT can't just jump in on TSM without overextending a core member here. I'm surprised to not see Sieges come out. Everybody held their breath as Reginald threw himself forward. That big body slam. I was waiting to see if that ultimate was going to come down, and it did not in this particular instance. Reginald looking at Pumandu. That Oracle Delixir painting a giant target on his back. Now, TSM, we've seen them do Desperation Barons before. This time round, though, they may be playing the bait game. They've got vision control. They know that uh, there's no vision here for SKT. I don't think Thank that you. was giving them vision into the pit, but the barrel will give it away. Now, all of a sudden, SKT realizing they have Maybe an advantage in this fight. Impact gets in. He manages to get the stun onto the odd one. Odd one repels up. Equalizer is going to slow down the entrance, but it's not going to have a huge amount. Impact is keeping on three members of TSM. The first victim will be special. He got the crescendo down, but it's not going to be enough to save them as now Dyrus will be the second victim of the fight. That's a double kill for Rat Piglet as he now flashes over the wall. Triple kill as he turns onto Wild Turtle. This is going to be the Quadra. Does pick up the Quadra kill as Reginald gets out cleanly. Piglet, 8, 2, and 3 is a terrifying Caitlyn. And they didn't even need to use the Strangle Thorns. The front line for SKT did such a good job of making sure they absorbed the impact. Equalizer did not land on any of the squishy back lines, nor did really explosive cast either. A well managed team fight now by the Koreans. Now they've got control over Baron, but you've always got to be concerned about right side Gragas. We do see Bingy going very, very low. Piglet has to 90 caliber in to start tanking up the Baron. They secure that one. Five seconds on the clock before Impact gets up. He does not manage to pick it up. And now SK Telecom, 10,000 gold lead, five tower lead, and the Baron buff? Surely it's too much to come back from. It's going to take a lot for TSM to come back from this. It would be somewhat of a miracle here. And yes, the, the road is very steep and quite uphill for these guys, but you never know. There is a crowd back of them here. There's always the chance. Well, let's we'll see if they can manage to pull that one up. Dragon has respawned and TSM are in position to pick this one up. However, SKT are roaming around. It does look like Pumandu's the only one close enough to really do anything about it. TSM will secure this one. There is an open exposed inhibitor. Now the timer is on. Can they get back to base in time? They should be able to. There's not a ton of pressure coming in just yet from SKT. They're, they're not rushing into it, is the thing. SKT are still being composed about this, stealing away the buffs, making sure the lanes are starting to get pushed. The funny thing is TSM was actually stuck over by that golem buff. They actually could have all in the inhib and probably gotten it. But SKT aren't looking to take a big risk here. They're saying, oh, we're going to make sure that we don't get caught out. We've got plenty of time left on Baron buff. 
We'll do our, our bookkeeping and then get the siege before Baron times out. As it stands right now, SKT with immense vision control on this map. Look at the number of pink wards littered across the, the uh, TSM jungle right now. TSM will not be able to move or leave their base without SKT being fully, fully aware of it. Right now, they're starting to stack towards that top lane. And that's the good thing about pink ward spam, is not only does it let you see the opposing team come in, it also lets you guarantee that there's no wards from the other team either, so that they know they can run around blind and find picks if TSM ever does try to challenge something. This inhib is going to be free. TSM has to fight underneath a turret to stand a chance of winning. SK Telecom secure that one completely unchallenged, uncontested, and now start moving up to the top lane. They want to clear out those minions, prevent the wave pushing against them, and TSM with the tower now. Now they're going to decide it's, it's but it quite literally now or never as far as this matchup is concerned. It stands SKT with the minion advantage and that long, long range of Caitlyn. Finally going to start hitting the tower, gets a single hit down before the wave is cleared out. TSM do have very good wave clear. They do have very good wave clear, but they don't have an easy answer to Piglet. Unlike an AD carry like Bane or Corky, who is actually in range of explosive cast when hitting a turret, Bane is so far away, Reggie can't easily uh, threaten him. This turret will lose 300 health every minion wave until it falls over. As it stands, Faker is now solo pushing the Nexus towers. Dyer is going to do the best he can to respond, but if he gets caught by a charm, that is going to be scary. The tower is now dropping lower and lower. It's down to a couple hundred hit points. This SKT now going to try tank us on our Boom Man dude gets pinned against the wall. Turret hit goes down, does pick up a kill. Reginald able to secure that with the aid of the turret. There are super minions on the Nexus towers, and now with TSM responding, SKT may try and finish that tower off. And so even though Reggie's not on Ari, he's still just to eat on a support and knock it down. And it's a 5v4. Oh my gosh. X Special is going to go so incredibly low. Less than 100 HP. He does manage to uh, stun up Faker. There's Faker is now dropped by Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle in behind enemy lines. Caught between a Bengi and an Impact. Impact closes off X Special as Bengi now dives forward. Piglet is going to claim out the Ignite. Damage just continues to tick as Dyrus is overheating. So no more spells can come down. Wild Turtle's doing the best he can. But he gets dropped. The ace in the hole finishes it off. Double kill for Impact, double kill for Piglet. Now they turn their attention to the tower. Reginald is left alone. His ultimate is up. He's going to have to do a monumental defense to save TSM. It's a three versus one inside the base. Reggie picks up home guards, but Piglet has full HP right now. And so does Lee Sin. He's, uh, or he's regenerating with that Baron buff as well. This might just be the game for the Koreans. Explosive cask is available. Bangi, Piglet, Impact. They finish off the first tower. They finish off the second tower. Cask is going to delay the inevitable. Is now special rejoins the fray. He's going to see a stun onto Reggie. Is now Bangi and Impact are exhausted. They're onto the Nexus. We see a slice forward. Impact gets to the opposite side. The tower is going to drop. Piglet has rejoined. He's going to be able to close out the kill. Ladies and gentlemen, SK Telecom. T what is your second team in Group A? They pick up the win against TSM. What a good game. Very, very well played by both sides. You have to give credit to both these teams for putting on a very good show. The crowd appreciative as well. The good play by that SKT1 squad. But I gotta say, that was a very well-deserved win here. Congratulations to SK Telecom. They, they really put the hurt on TSM early.